when it rains, it pours, they say. I've been trying to troubleshoot the spindle motor on my CNC and then the Z stage crept out. It's not moving anywhere. Um, welcome back to the shrine. Tonight, a special treat here. YouTube is not able to convey the smells that is uh, emanating from this motor but for my long starter motor career I, uh, I smell this many times I gotta tell you this is a nice mixture of uh, burnt up carbon brushes and um, insulation that was overheated uh, for the typical starter motors we pushed them until failure and we were curious about that failure point so we were just cranking up the current now this specimen here is the uh, servo motor for the Z axis and uh, when I turn the shaft there is some sound to it I hope you can hear that. Oh, that means big money out of my pocket, but first I need to figure out if it works at all. So uh, let's see how it's built, what's inside, and uh, what's wrong with it. First thing is this uh, manual that uh, I have for the CNC. You can see it's a fryer machine systems, and it's got diagrams here. And I just wanted to look at how it's built. So you can see three phase is coming in. There are two fuses here, 32M fuses. There's a transformer. And down on this side of the transformer, there's 220. And then on this side, uh, there's supposed to be 110 volts. And then we got a big fuse here, a 20 amp. And that's hooked up to this bridge, which will rectify it. And there's a big capacitor here, just kind of smoothing things out. And then we have two wires going to the servo drives. And so we can assume that whatever voltage is on this side here, that is going to be fed to the servo. But again, you can see it's not DC, it's, it's, uh, it's not AC it's DC voltage so DC voltage is coming to the servo drives here and that tailors it to the motor so you can see these are all symmetric so the X Y and Z they all have the same uh, voltage going in so there's one coil here that shows 0 to 24 volt and then this coil shows 0 to 110 volt and and so this is supposed to be 110 volt plus some that's coming from the cap and the and the uh, diode bridge. So looking at the nameplate, not much we can see. Uh, it says MTS 3M 4-59 um, can't really read it, heatsink pounds copper something six and a half to 2400 um, the, the nameplate is worn off um, so I, I can't really tell even what's the voltage on it what's the nameplate voltage uh, three and a half H sync 31 15 and a half you know some some stuff but it doesn't say anywhere 140 volts maybe maybe that's the voltage here 140 so that must be the voltage so 110 volts on a transformer plus the capacitor and uh, and the diode bridge you know it, it's probably close to 140 the first thing I'm gonna do is uh, take out these brushes you know what I'm just gonna go and do a a test a continuity check and uh, see if we have uh, uh, any resistance on these wires so so this is probably a neutral wire and then we have here one that's labeled A2 and then we have another one that's labeled A1 so let's see if there is continuity 
okay it shows one and a half ohms resistance now if I go to voltage here and I spin the shaft you can see that it's generating back EMF so that's negative I spin in the opposite direction and it's positive nonetheless something rattles inside so I want to get inside and see what is that thing that that rattles and I'm just gonna wear these gloves because it's super dirty and uh, hopefully not gonna get bad comments about it or I'm just not gonna read the comments because there's no comments on my channel okay so let's see the brushes It's got a real bad burnt up smell and this is typically how the brushes look. So you can see that uh, the brush still has some life. Let's do a measurement. So this one measures 13 millimeters. This one is 13.3 this is 13 and that one is 13.3 so it's it's pretty uniform 13.2 13.3 millimeters so it's it's fairly uniform I would say but the, the the issue is you can see that that this spot here I don't like that spot it it's not nice I'm not sure what's causing it. It might be just a cut in the brush holder, but um, the smell, the smell is, is really bad. It smells like something inside burnt up. So the first thing is to remove the encoder. So again, this is a DC motor. All it does, you connect a voltage here to the terminals. And by the way, that terminal looks like it's burnt up right here there's some burn marks on it so uh, you connect voltage to this end DC voltage and that will make the shaft spin and basically this encoder is hooked up to the shaft so it's telling the confuser uh, where is the shaft what is the position and how fast it's spinning so the first thing is to remove that but that screwdriver doesn't fit So let's try this one. Okay, that fits. If it fits, it strips. <laughs> and if it's not broken, just try harder. I've heard it on a different channel. You guys probably watched that channel too. Okay need that one and oh it just slides off so really it just slides off so it must be keyed huh huh that wasn't there very well so you can see here that I didn't loosen this screw maybe all that was the problem I didn't loosen this screw and I was able just to pull it off of the shaft so this encoder wasn't attached properly and if if this encoder I read about this failure mode earlier if this encoder is not fastened to the shaft properly so there's some wiggle that can cause problems with the control the control doesn't like it maybe I just need to go and and hook it up to DC and see if it spins 
but I don't have 110 volts DC here. So many questions. Let's just pop this cover off. See what's inside. That encoder, it wasn't on the shaft at all. It was, it was not fastened very well. And uh, one more thing I saw on the encoder is that um, there's some kind of schmoo here, some kind of glue that is gluing this screw in. And that's supposed to prevent loosening. There's actually two screws. There's one here and one here. And none at last, it just popped off. Yeah, there's two flats on the shaft. You see, there's one. Come on, Sony, be nice. So there are there are two flats here. You see, there's one flat here, and there's one flat there. So these screws will grab onto that. So there's one screw here and there's one screw here. Okay, maybe if I frame. So there's one screw here and there's one here. So those supposed to grab on those flats, but it just, it just came off. They weren't tightened too much. The encoder is Renko encoder INC. Looks like it's a thousand uh, division per revolution and it runs freely, it's not locking up. Well, let's take this cover off and uh, let's look inside. It's funny, I had this uh, CNC for three years, ha haven't made a chip with it. That's a, it's a pretty deep, uh, pretty uh, um, steep learning curve, especially that you can uh, crash it and that can cause a lot of trouble and I, I didn't try hard so far to get it going Looks like there's a gasket here under the cover. Okay, we got the gasket. And the smell is just worse. It smells really like a burnt up motor. Again, I I smelled so many burnt up motors that uh, I think I have uh, experience in the field of burnt up motors. Okay. One at a time. There you go. So this is just a NEMA, some kind of glass reinforced phenolic. The phenolic doesn't smell bad. And uh, what do we got here? Look at that, there are some small, there are some small brushes here going to the small one. So there are four brushes and there's a small commutator here. This is what's called commutator. So if you have a look, there are four brushes here and then these are the brush springs. Okay, these, these are just coil springs, they provide a constant force pushing the brushes against the commutator here. And these two wires are hooked up to these brushes so when the motor is spinning it will commutate here but I've got no idea why. Maybe they use the motor that has more options than they would need Maybe this is a feedback mechanism. 
Looks like something is holding it back. Oh, okay. Okay. So there's a small rotor here. There's a small rotor and you can see there are coils here. Okay, these are these are magnets. So this is a position sensor. This is most likely a position sensor. Huh. So you can see there is there's some kind of lamination here, so it's got poles. And it's got equal number of poles to the uh, commutator. Same same number of poles as, as commutator bars. I'm pretty sure that's a, that's a position sensor or or speed sensor. I'm not sure why they need the uh, um, the encoder in this case. Uh, these are the brushes. You can see all the brushes look good. These are my notes and the error message was Z lag over max. So before I, I went in to check you know what might be wrong with this motor uh, I went online did some research it says check truss bearing uh, the, the lift screw uh, works without a problem. Uh, check if Z encoder is loose again this is the Z encoder and it might have been loose. Uh, swap X and Z for troubleshooting, blown fuse that couldn't be because all three of the motors are on the same fuse and X and Y are working and then Z axis break and it, it doesn't have a break. I don't get a break from it, not <laughs> sure. Okay, so uh, I think to be able to remove the spindle to, to separate this um, I'm gonna have to remove this whatever on the end this this thing <laughs> this motor or feedback mechanism I'm not even sure what it is so I'm gonna flip it it looks like there are four true bolts but on this side I can see I can see um, bolt heads, so most likely I'm going to have to put a uh, socket, a deep socket on this end and remove it that way. Um, this flange here on the spindle is keyed. Uh, it's keyed to the spindle. Don't stop me now, I'm having such a good time, I'm having a ball. Don't stop me now. Remember kids, the simplest machine is a wedge. There you go. Keys off. Oh, it looks like it's coming off. This front flange. There you go. Okay. Front flange is off. Oh, look at that. It's a permanent magnet motor. And the armature is so burnt up. <laughs> oh. oh shit. Sorry. Sorry for my Hungarian balsamic or my Russian pizdets. That's what they say in Russia when they see something like this. Okay, so <laughs> what do we got here? <laughs> oh you guys, you can smell it. <laughs> <laughs> it's just the smell. The smell is just so bad. <laughs> I I smelled something like this for starter motors for, for 20 years 
And this smell is <laughs> just so bad. I can't tell you how bad it is. I think this motor was on its last leg. The funny thing, it, it still had continuity, which is strange. That bearing still spins, but it makes some kind of noise. Ah, she was holding on tight. So what we got here is permanent magnets in the stator. So this is the stator and the stator has permanent magnets. These are also called arcuates. I'm trying to find, there you go, trying, trying to find a way to show a black component with a black background. So again, looking for something I can point with and I'm not worrying about it being magnetic. Okay, there's a piece of cable. So, so you can see there are four magnets here and on the magnets the shiny stuff is the lacquer. It's actually a reflown lacquer and uh, when the motor will overheat uh, then you know when it's spinning that lacquer is gonna get everywhere on the outside so that's what we see here. You see there's, there's just reflown lacquer of varnish everywhere. So there's two sets of magnets and the magnets are glued into the housing and they also have these springs these spring retainers here in between can can take a good picture of the black thing so these are the these are the spring retainers and then these magnets are called arcuates these are just just uh, the cheapest ferrite permanent magnets so that's all to it maybe on this side it's not that shiny so these are the retainers. I did some analysis on these retainers. They insert them in a radial fashion. If the compression force is too high when they are being inserted, they can chip the magnet. The manufacturing hates it. But this is how the starter motors, for example, small uh, uh, starter motors are built for, uh, for uh, passenger cars or light duty vehicles. Okay, so here's the armature. So this is not called, this is not a rotor, this is called armature. And it's called armature because reasons. But what you can see here, this is potty here that is put in for balancing. And then you can see that the, um, the stack, the armature stack is skewed so that the laminations are not straight, they're not parallel to the shaft, but they are skewed. And many times there is drill holes on the opposite side, that's how they balance them. But in this case you can see that it, they added potty here. There's more potty on this side. This is just some kind of epoxy that will latch on. And there's still more here. It doesn't smell good. I'm, I'm pretty sure this motor is burnt up, but I don't have a way to test it. But for example, if you look at this area here, in this region, you can see that this insulation, this slot insulation, these are called slots, and uh, this slot insulation is completely discolored, and then the wire is discolored. So this motor had a couple hot suppers. So still, I think I'm going to go and remove this piece and then in that case I'm going to be able to pull it out. So there are two small set screws here, or grub screws that retain this piece to the shaft and uh, that wrench fits which never happens. <clears throat> it 
doesn't want to come off and I just don't want to uh, force it it moved a little bit but this still seems to be a press fit some kind of a press fit I'm not sure what I can get out of it if I if I remove it inside you can see the brush holder and there are some cables and wires connecting the the positive and the negative side so there are two brushes okay they are connected across so this one is connected here and this one is connected to the bottom one so one is the positive one is the negative so it's just a standard sort of DC motor the funny thing I heard is that if you hook up AC to the DC motor it's still gonna run and this is 140 volts <laughs> that makes it really uh, interesting tempting I would say there's a lot of temptation just to hook this up and see what happens well if it ain't broken just try harder. Well, needless to say that didn't go as planned. <laughs> That's end of story for that motor. <laughs> that was that was intense. I gotta tell you. So as you can see I smashed mushroomed the end of the shaft where the encoder sits this is by the way a quarter inch and then the motor shaft is 5.8 so I mushroomed it it's not that I wanted to reuse it or something but it is what it is and then I went ahead and machined a flat on the end and I just drilled a center hole thinking I can press it out because I was trying to remove this rotor so this is what this is called this is a tack TACH or tachometer so when this is spinning this is giving out a voltage and the electronics is monitoring that voltage so you see this is supposed to be just a nice slip fit and I was trying to pull it off but it didn't budge so I thought I can press it out well as you can see the press out didn't really go the way I wanted that is a clip ring here that is stuck that is stuck on the bearing there you go so e-clip or clip ring oh, that bearing is really crusty front bearing is sort of okay but this is crusty which is interesting because you would think that there is less load in the back but what happens here is there's more thermal load this commutator is throwing sparks like a you know what is it that throwing sparks like Christmas lights like a sparkler <laughs> So there's four brushes and when this is spinning it is switching the commutator is actively a switch and it's switching and it's throwing sparks and there's plasma and this is like overheated so some of that heat travels into the bearing so this rear end bearing or commutator end bearing will always see a larger thermal load so what happened is I was trying to press it out from this side and you can see there was a collar in the housing on this side holding the bearing and I completely ruined it so that part broke out of the housing so this is the brush holder 
as you can see they have these plastic inserts pressed into the aluminum housing and inside that it's it looks like brass yellow brass or cartridge brass brush holders and as you can see this brush holder here you see there's a wire this brush holder is connected to that one and it goes out so one is the positive one is the negative and then as you can see the third wire here is grounded today is actually tomorrow so I did some research and uh, try to see what's going on with this motor so there's one failure mode here this is an o-ring and you can see that the o-ring when the housing was um, assembled got pinched and it completely cut the o-ring here so that would be a leakage point if you imagine all these servo motors are being placed inside the CNC and there's one for the X stage and one is for the Y stage and so the coolant and all that stuff is just pours down this that's why the nameplate is unreadable I couldn't read the nameplate I could only read the pin stamping on the nameplate because the rest of the text was missing so there are the three wires again there's positive negative and then there's a ground wire here yeah, this green is the ground wire you cannot even tell the color of the wire inside it is so charred it's charred up from all the smoke and the heat that was circulated inside and I'm gonna need to get a couple of these air fresheners for the workshop because this burnt phenolic this is phenolic smell it just smells up everything it smells up my my clothing my my, my gloves and the entire workshop so this is the armature again this is not a rotor but this is an armature and I did again some research there's a company in Poland who will um, um, overhaul these they're gonna rebuild them and they sell these for 550 bucks plus about 200 bucks for shipping you can see that on eBay now if we are looking here on the commutator side so this is the commutator what the commutator does each of these individual bars is hooked up to the wire so you can have a wave winding or a lap winding so if you have a wave winding then you can see the wire that comes out here is hooked up to this commutator bar and there are wires that are coming in from here from this side and so you have one pair coming here one pair coming from here and then they meet in this commutator bar depending on the actual design but one thing caught my attention here okay you can see that this here is completely burned up and charred so this this motor was on its last lag now what happens here there, this is the Z stage in the in the CNC and as is it does not have a brake and so they probably use the motor to create a braking torque so that the lead screw will not move under the weight of the Z stage so I can go up there on a the CNC and I can try to turn the shaft slowly and when I stop turning the, the lead screw shaft I can still see that under the inertia the Z stage the weight of the Z stage keeps it moving so it, it keeps going down it's not self locking if you're looking at this thread here if I'm moving this screw it is moving the nut this is the nut it's moving left or right but if I butt this screw to the wall and I start pushing the nut the nut is not gonna be able to turn the screw so it doesn't work backwards because it's a self locking mechanism the secret is in the threads so you can see that this is a pretty fine thread and so if you would unwind the thread and represent it as a ramp it is like it is like having a small car being pushed up on a ramp and there's a friction a coefficient of friction between them no it's simple 
kids, remember this. If the tangent of the helical angle is smaller than the coefficient of the friction, then this is going to become a self-locking thread, which in case of the CNC machine, it is a ball screw. And so it's got completely different physics and dynamics. So it's not a self-locking. And so if they use this motor to act as a brake, they have to run a small current. And if the rotor is stationary, that current is running through the brushes here, through the entire armature. And so that might be one reason why the Z stage will burn up prematurely. So again, this is the housing here. And as you can see, none of the text, none of the text is really readable. Only the pin, pin stamp. So there's a part number pin stamp. There's some serial number and a lot of other information. So I went online and I, I found this part number. Well, there's one seller on eBay who has one motor available. It's about two and a half hour drive north from where I live and they are listing it as is. So they are not sure if it's gonna work or not because as I, I called them up they said there's no way they can test it. So I'm gonna drive up there and then put it real close to my nose and start smelling <laughs> if it has a similar smell. But this is really complex because this servo motor is a DC motor. It's a brushed DC motor. It also has a tachometer on it. So this is the tachometer and it's got its own brushes and springs. And it also has a encoder which boggles my mind because this is belt and suspenders, okay? You would think that if you have an encoder with, uh, let's see, five wires, that will give you a speed reference, a speed and a position reference. So why do you need the tachometer? Don't know. I really don't know. I don't even know if this is connected really to the electronics or if it does any good. Maybe they're just relying on the encoder and this is just the way they bought these motors. So they are not using this feature. So I, I don't know. Unless I disconnect the tachometer and turn on the CNC and see if it works, I cannot tell you. But that's what this is. It's a tachometer. So I went ahead and I made a nameplate. Basically, this is what the nameplate says. So there's some gibberish here and then the model number is MTS 30M4-59. The 59 in the part number is really, really important. If you are working on your CNC, you have similar issues, keep listening. <laughs> so here's a torque in Newton meters. This is the stall torque. Okay, so that is the maximum torque that the motor will be able to crank out. It's three and a half newton meters. So it's not much. Okay, it's, it's not that much of a torque. Um, this stepper motor can do half a newton, me newton meter. Some larger ones can, can go up to 0.8. That's the maximum torque. Um, so the maximum voltage is 140 volts. The peak current is 30 amps, which is a lot. So there's a torque in inch pounds, and then there is a, a current here. It says six and a half amps. So that's, I guess, the nominal current. And then we have the resistance in ohms. It's two ohms, and you remember I measured the resistance. It was one and a half. And then there's the inductance in microhenry, and then this is BMF. BEMF, okay, so that's back EMF or back electromotive force. So when I turn the shaft, it's going to act as a generator. It's going to create a certain amount of voltage. So you can see it will create 59 volts per 1000 RPM. 
So at 1000 RPM it's going to create 59 volts and at 2000 RPM it's going to create 118 volts. The maximum RPM is 2400 and then this is for the tachometer. So again it's got a built-in tachometer and it says that it's generating nine and a half volts per thousand RPM. So if the electronics is measuring the voltage that this generates which is independent from the motor electronically. Mechanically it's hooked up to the motor but electronically it's independent so you are looking at nine and a half volts at thousand RPM and then finally this is the rotational inertia of the motor so you can see it's in pound inch second square and it's 0 0.015 so this is for um, analysis basically to see how fast we can spin this up to 1000 RPM or 2000 RPM because this sucker is heavy so when you're spinning it in this direction in a normal spinning direction you will need to wait a couple you know 10 20 milliseconds to spin this up because you just have so much torque coming from the electromagnetic force to spin it again um, I can see reflowing there so this is <laughs> it's it's done um, I can maybe send this in to the polish guys and they can rewind it but then it will need a new commutator and then the shaft is is probably um, screwed up so that's pretty much it I'm gonna go ahead and source the new uh, motor and put it together and uh, get you guys back when it's uh, when it's happening I hope uh, you enjoyed uh, the teardown video and uh, maybe some of you guys uh, will be able to use this information for your benefit when you are rebuilding or uh, Fryer CNC's or NLM this is also runs uh, with the NLM name but it's really made by a company look at this it's called permanent magnet DC servo motor manufactured by SEM in London England I mean look at that London England I wouldn't have thought that there's something still manufactured in London England other than movies or superstar or Queens or something along those lines so SEM stands for small electric motors that's the name of the company and that's what's basically printed here so that's it that's a wrap for today um, if you guys like the video as always please give me a thumbs up and you're always welcome to come back to the shrine for the hand-me-downs of the industry. See you next time. Bye.